Hey there guys, Mark here from Soulfly Concept Scenery and welcome back to this YouTube channel video, channel video YouTube thing. Anyway, uh, today we're going to be talking about FS Earth tiles and uh, how to use them, it, them, this thing, when it loads. So what is FS Earth tiles? It's a tile thing uh, where you can select a particular portion and you can basically have that in flight sim, so you can make photorealistic terrain, it makes photo tiles, that's just what it does, and I know I plugged something into the audio jack because I did it like an hour ago. Anyway, this is FS Earth Tiles, and uh, you can find a link for this in the description, there'll be a direct link to my Dropbox, so you can just go ahead and download straight away. Uh, I've already pre-programmed the INI for you, so everything's all set up and ready, there's the Resample in there for FS2004 and FSX, and I may throw in the P3D one if you're lucky. So, um, that is pretty much everything to discuss on the surface. Let's just have a quick look at the interface. Um, select area, exclude area, so this is basically everything selected apart from what you exclude. So, if I want to exclude an area, then, you know, stuff's going to get real. So, this is select area, so we're going to draw, and we can select an area. Um, yeah, simple as that. However, this area is pretty big. Now, if we have a look over here, we can see the estimated size. So, estimated download size, it's um, 26,000 megabytes. So, that's 26 gigabytes. Uh, estimated scenery size, it's, three, it's 37, no, it's 375,000 megabytes. So, 375 gig. And required free RAM, I need just over a gig of that. So required workspace would be 178,000, no wait, that's more than that, that's uh, 1,785,000, so that's so that's 178 gig of required workspace, and I don't, I don't have that. No, I don't. I have less than that. So we're not going to go ahead and select this area because there's like a million zones in it. 626 to be precise. Look here, this will give you area count and tile count. We want less than that. Definitely less. So, the smaller the, the area is, the, obviously the less it puts strain on your hard drive and your processor and things like that. So anyway, let's just jump in straight how to use it. Uh, the INI file that I'm going to include with this download for you is fully equipped with the Earth masks as well, so that's all well and good. So, let's just jump straight in and do ourselves a small scenery area so I can show you how to use the mask tool and everything that comes with it. Um, what should we do? What should we do? Uh, do, do, do let's do... Um, what's this? What's this island? Yeah. No idea. I don't know what that is. Let's pick somewhere fancy, somewhere nice, somewhere decent. Uh, Florida Keys, that's quite decent, isn't it? Let's go down here. Florida Keys, there they are. Okay, we're going to be doing this for FSX. Um, I don't think this supports P3D, but obviously FSX and P3D are the one and the same. So if you want to compile for P3D, you just go ahead and change it to FSX and sort of have the INI file pointing towards the P3D resample tool. Um, the INI file that I'm giving you does not contain this following service. Google Earth. <laughs> and the reason why it doesn't contain this following service is because, um... Well... Still. Right, so we're going to use this. Uh, I believe this is Marathon. Looks like Marathon. Forgive me if it's not Marathon, I'm not very good at places. So we're going to use this as our base, so let's go ahead and draw a section. Okay. So that's what we're going to be using, that particular one, and you can see it's required workspace just over, just under a gig. And that's for a download resolution of 1, so if we zoom into 1, that's sort of the resolution we're talking, so right up close it's going to be kind of strange. It's not going to be 100% perfect. And of course Google Earth, it's covered in these watermarks here as well, so we're going to see them. That's a given. It's a definite given. Okay, so let's just jump straight in and do it. So it's going to be called Marathon. Oh, I forgot to put the thing in. The little thing. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just changing the folders where it's going to be saved to. Marathon. Okay, Google Earth, FSX, uh, 875 tiles. Okay, let's go ahead and start that now. Uh, before we do, scenery compiler FSX, area snap off. Create masks, yes, because we're dealing with water. Compile scenery, not yet. No. And use cache, no one cares. So we click start, and what it's going to do now is it's going to grab every single tile in that area and it's going to join them into one big image. So we'll join the action when it's done. Okay, that's nearing completion now. Uh, about 100 tiles to go. So what we're going to do with this once it's done is we're just going to watch it compile the rest. So now it's done, you can see right at the bottom here it says resampling texture row and 2,500 of 5,527. So that's going up by 100 every time. You didn't need to know that, I just thought I'd point it out. And now we're doing the columns. And there we go. So now this is done, you'll notice that FS Earth Masks opens automatically. I like it when things work out. And what it's doing now is it's generating uh, the BMPs for this particular scenery area. I'm pretty sure Florida doesn't actually have winter, so. That's a thing. Right, now that's done, that's all we need to do with FS Earth tiles. Um, if you wanted to compile the scenery as it is, you could always go ahead and click on Compile Scenery, just change that to Yes, and it will compile the scenery for you. However, um, it will not compile the masks the way you want them to be. So let's go ahead and find where I stored that. I'm glad the Explorer page opened on this side of the screen, because if it was on that one, you wouldn't see it. Um, so, look what disk, it's FSET, it's in work, and um, what do we call it? Marathon. Marathon, marathon, marathon. There it is. Marathon. So, we're going to open up Photoshop now, we've got these images, and um, we're going to start adding our mask definitions. These definitions are simply colours uh, that the mask image uses to determine where things are, for example, things like lakes, rivers, sea. Um, auto gen area, things like that. Okay, so Photoshop took a lot longer to load than I would appreciate, hence why there was a jump cut there. Okay, dokey. Now we have Photoshop running. I think it took a bit longer to load than I have this page open, I, I don't know. But let's get the image in there, and that's probably going to take about a week as well, so just bear with me. Oh no, that loaded pretty fast, so that's okay. Right, so this is our image. And as you can see, there's quite a lot to do um, to sort of map out where the water is and things like that. So let's just get a hold of ourselves and see what we can do about it. So if I were you, I would take a screenshot right now, uh, as these are your colors. Transitions, water creation, photo real water, autogen and seaside, terra photo real, Nightlights, Autogen, and Dirty Rivers. Dirty Rivers. Ugh. So, yeah. Take a screenshot right now, and you can grab this um, straight off the screen, as it were. This is how I got mine, to be honest with you. I took it from um, a friend's tutorial. He posted it on, I think it was Vivo or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, no, it wasn't Vivo. It was... You know what? Who, who the hell cares? Vimeo? I don't know. So, these are your colours. Um... The main ones you want to be focusing on are transitions, water creation, and photo water. Um, of course, if you want to, you can use nightlights, autogen, and dirty rivers. Dirty rivers uh, doesn't really tend to work on my flight sim because I've got like a water add-on, so I think it's just a bit strange. Um, it, it doesn't like it that much. So if you're using something like Rex or Active Sky, which comes with the textures, anything like that, then then yeah, I'm pretty sure dirty rivers won't make a difference. However. Transitions, you need that. Uh, water creation, that's just sort of clear crystal water, and photoreal water is sort of the main water textures that Flight Sim uses, plus the underlying texture of your uh, scenery. So that's that explained. Now let's jump straight in and see what we can do about it. Water creation. So this is our main BMP, so let's go ahead and make a new layer because we don't want to touch this. Just zoom in and 
I would imagine the best thing to do is just start drawing. You'll be more accurate than I will when you come to do this, so let's just go right ahead and be very inaccurate and do it quickly. So we've got a new layer, we're just going to start drawing in the colour that we need. Get that out of the way. Right. Is that a wall or something? What, what is that? It's like a speedboat with like a very long tail. Okay, cool. I can live with that kind of stuff, that's fine. Okay, so you get the picture. We're just going to be drawing over the ocean in this colour. Now we could use photo real water. Um, it's up to you whether you use it or not. I like to use the clear water, um, which is this yellowy, greeny, yellow colour. It kind of depends on what light you're looking at, actually. If I sort of put my head down, it turns green. If I lift my head up, it turns yellow. So comment below what colour that actually is, because I have no idea. My monitor is old. Hang on. I still have no idea. Right, two. There we go. So we're just going to go over the entire thing in that colour. So do a jump count, I'll be back in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so I may have mildly underestimated how much water there is in the Florida Keys. And this is just one island. Well, kind of. So um, I've now completed that. If I go ahead and do this, um, you will notice that accuracy has uh, been abandoned in full. So that's a thing. Because uh, you know, if I was being more accurate, I'd fill in the gaps. For example, um, this one here. I would bring the water right to the edge like it should be. Um, but I haven't done any of that because accuracy evades me today. No more accuracy on this YouTube channel within the next 24 hours. Thank you, please, very much, kindly. Okay, so... There's like little bits here, here and there that you can do fairly quickly like that, for example. Now, this is all one colour, <clears throat> as you can see. So, I'm not going to be overly accurate with it, I'm not going to be amazingly accurate with it. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what you need to do next. So, this is all of the water drawn in place. Well, I say all of it. This is the vast majority of the water drawn in place now. Okay, if we go ahead and change that, you can see um, what's water. There we go. So that's all the water drawn in place. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at some of the other things available. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have uh, water gen, night lights, dirty rivers, transitions. Now, dirty rivers, I'm not going to use today because this is the floor of the keys. Nothing's dirty. It's all picturesque and pristine. I have no idea how these places fare in hurricanes. I mean, they're, you know, like three feet above sea level, aren't they? So, uh, transitions is what we're going to use next. Now, transitions are exactly what they sound like. They transition the scenery out um, in like a sort of fadey motion. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, over water, you notice the transitions. Like, you, you really can notice them. So let's go ahead and just add... No, that's too thick. Let's bring the hardness of the brush down and the size up a bit. There we go, that's fine. So yeah, over water, you can notice the transitions. New layer. Um, you can notice the transition inside FSX because um, they look darker. Simple as that, really. It just looks darker. So I'm going to fill a couple of transitions in so you can see what's going on. Um, in normal terms, say, for example, your scenery ended here. Um, you just sort of randomly draw around the edge of the scenery like that. To generate a transition, you will notice what I mean over here, but to sort of give you an idea, I'm going to do it in the middle of the city here for you. So, say for example, we don't want these hills here, so we're just going to transition them out like that. So, that's everything we need for the imagery. Um, not the imagery, sorry, that's everything we need for the mask so far. We don't need to go any further with that, so let's bring in the actual mask image.
Lovely. Okay, no longer need colours open. If you didn't take a screenshot of that, go back and take one. Okay, just join these two layers together. Pop them in. Close that. No, do not save. And just pop that on top as you would. Join the layers and save that. There you go, it is saved. Photoshop can be closed. What's left to do now is you have three INF files in the main folder. As you can see, the mask has taken place as well. So, three INF files in the main folder. Uh, the ones you want to be focusing on are area mask info and mask seasons. Um, it's up to you whether you use seasons or not. I'm, like I say, I'm pretty sure the key doesn't have snow, so I wouldn't be using that one. Um, but yeah, either one of these is the one you want to use. We're just going to be using the mask today, so it's going to be this main image plus the mask itself. So this is going to be the scenery color all the time. Okay. Let's open things up. Uh, I've got mine in downloads, isn't it? So FSBT 103 in there. Doobie do do resample X, there it is. So just find our thing and pop it over the top. Now what happened now is that I'll build the scenery essentially. So come back when it does. Okay, so I sort of missed the end of that one and that's actually compiled. It was only taking about two minutes to be honest with you. Um, it compiled and went into the scenery folder we designated back at the beginning. So let's go ahead and we'll find that. So it's in FSET, add on scenery, earth tiles, and what did we save it as? It was Marathon, wasn't it? Marathon, yeah. So there we go, there's our scenery. And you might be surprised to notice that there's no textures. Um, I still haven't quite figured out why that is. I think it's all in the BGL file, but uh, you're asking the wrong guy. I make airport scenery, not land. So, um, this is our main scenery file, so what we want to do is we want to bring that into Flight Simulator. And that's done just by the normal way of going into it, so wherever your FSX is located, or P3D, or 2004, whatever, um, this mask technique, I don't think it works for 2004, but you'll have to um, try it yourself. I think I'll give it a shot myself as well at some point. So where are we again? Steam. Uh, yeah, Steam apps, common, FSX. I'm just going to shove it into add-on scenery because of reasons. Okay, there we go. That's in there, apparently. All right, now let's run FSX and see what we have created. Okay, so we have Flight Simulator loaded up. Now let's go ahead and jump on to Marathon. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Okay. Um, what? What? What is it? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go for Key Sky Harbor because I have no idea where that airport is. I don't know the code. Winter, whatever the hell. Okay, let's go. Oh no, please take your time, by all means. <laughs> Be here forever at this rate. Okay, I'm in the sea, which is a good sign. And up we go. Um, okay, maybe this isn't Marathon, maybe it's over there. Okay, there we are. So, this is our photo scenery created in FS Earth Tiles. Now, this is the transition, you can see. And like I say, um, you can really tell the difference between photorealistic water and FSX default, especially with the transition there, because it just sort of fades out nicely to the same color, and then it goes dark around the edge, which is relatively annoying, if I'm honest. Okay, so we come over to here to our flickering ships, which is beautiful, which is wonderful, just what we wanted. 
And uh, just looking around, looking around. Yeah, the water mask has taken place quite nicely. Yeah, very good. Okay, so that's how you make photorealistic scenery using FS Earth tiles. Uh, remember to sort of keep your eye on the size of things and whatnot, because the bigger things are, the more it takes up the RAM and things like that. And this is our transition on land. As you can see, it's a lot better than the transitions on water. I haven't discovered a good way to transition from water, sort of FSX default water, to photorealistic water yet. I haven't, haven't discovered it. I reckon I will at some point. See, accuracy just went out the window completely. I had no no cares in the world. None at all. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, it was certainly fun to make. Like I say, I completely underestimated how much water I had to draw in. But um, yeah, ultimately, I think it went quite well. And there's a little tiny airport, and I'm curious as to where we are. Where are we? Is this Key West? It is Key West. Hey. Okay. See, I'm I'm not all bad. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching. This was uh, a senior tutorial for photorealistic scenery with FS Earth tiles. Like I say, I'll be putting the link uh, for the download of that in the description if you need it. There'll be a fully functional INI in there as well, and everything else that you need to come with it. Like, for example, um, uh, image tool, I think that's one of them needed. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, everything that I've got will be in there. Um, except for my INEI. INI, I quite have got to stop saying INEI. This is not a phone, it's not an INEI. It's it's an INI file. An INI! Yes. Must remember to stop calling the INI an IMI. An IMI AIE. Yeah, whatever. So, yeah, that's it. I'll put it in the description. It'll be a link direct to Dropbox so you can just download it at your leisure. Everything will be in there, and uh, if you need any more help, just don't be afraid to ask. Comment below, like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, closing in on 500 subs, and I couldn't be happier about that at all. So, uh, with that, on that note, enjoy your photo terrain, and I'll catch you in the next one. There are no straight lines in nature. No straight lines in nature. This is not natural. Not natural.